All right, welcome back. I'm gonna have a quick look at uh, Yaa Magazine. Just arrived uh, today, in fact. Issue number 14, June 2020. Welcome back to the big board. Uh, this is published by the dual companies owned by Mark Walker, uh, Flying Pig Games, and Tiny Battles Publishing. And I think Yaa is their, basically their masthead, would probably be the way I would uh, explain that. So uh, Yaa is a full color magazine. I would say it's equivalent to, in terms of its quality of production, uh, the Battles magazine. And uh, certainly the uh, production quality here is no, no uh, exception. So index wise, we're looking at some uh, a substantial number of, of reviews in this particular uh, edition. Blue Water Navy, The Devils to Pay, Red Storm from GMT, Freedom of the Underground Railroad, uh, uh, OST version three uh, update uh, from Eddie Carlson, uh, Long Cruel Woman uh, is reviewed, which is a Pacific uh, title. I think it's uh, it's either a Paul Rorba or a White Dogs game. White Dog Games title. We'll get to that in a sec. U Boot or U Boat. Uh, Norm Lundy does that one. Interceptor Ace. Radiation Dust. Now that's one I'm, a game I've not even heard of, and uh, one that I need to check out. It sounds pretty interesting. Then there's uh, four scenarios that have been made available. Uh, one for Devils to Pay, one for Armageddon War, one for OST version 2, which will be, uh, uh, sorry, it's not version 2, it's volume 2. Volume 2, uh, set, set in the European theatre. Uh, 65, the Vietnam squad level game uh, from Mark Walker. There's a scenario for that. There's a fiction piece uh, by Mark Walker, which if you followed him at all, you'll know, you will, may well have already read it. I believe it's just a reprint of that, and then the game also has a has a uh, the magazine has a game in it is what I'm, I'm trying to say here. Uh, so uh, Rotten Creek is the name of the game, and we're going to have a look at that. It's uh, set in uh, in Stalingrad, and, I, and we'll get we'll get to that in a minute. And then there's a little bit on, on the complete war game from uh, Peter Perlow. All right, so. <clears throat> Nice coverage of Blue Water Navy and actually gave me a few more insights into this title. I've been thinking about purchasing this, but after my experiences with Breaking the Chains, I had shied away from it. I've since seen uh, the rules for this and the uh, contents of the box at a friend's house and thought it looked quite good. Had a quick skim of the rules and thought it looked quite good and this reinforces that impression. So it's a pretty detailed review. Nice, good, full color pictures here kind of highlight the gameplay and whatnot. I'm assuming you can see that okay, I'm kind of to one side of the camera. And then uh, The Devil's to Pay, this is a full uh, review of this as well, written by John D. Burt. And once again, nice artwork on this, although these seem to be, uh, these might look like the, these are digital uh, images here, they're not uh, camera shots. And it goes on and on and on here. Uh, I've played this game. I like it a lot. I like most of Herman Luttman's games, in fact, if not all of them. And uh, I think this would be no exception. Although this is, as the article uh, correctly points out, quite a uh, strong, uh, high, strong level, quite a significant level of chaos in this particular version of the Broken Sword system and uh, uh, does a few things differently from the base system but all in all if you wanted to get into civil war tactical war gaming this is a great place to start so i'm a huge fan of this game uh red storm <coughs> yeah, roger larue does this article it's a, it's an in-depth article this is a, a fairly complex game very interesting looking i own a copy i've read the rules for it and it's probably not going to be for me. And in fact, I've got a couple of the other titles in the series that I will be uh, uh, divesting in the near future. But if you're into modern air war simulation and you want to see how that all works, this is the game for you. You want to blow up SAM sites and convoys and Soviet uh, uh, armored columns and things of that nature, you got to get this game. You'll love it. 
Freedom of the Underground Railroad. Uh, it's kind of a, a Euro style game here. And I, I have not read this article yet. I haven't read any of these articles yet. I've had a quick skim of them, but I haven't looked at this one in detail. This gets uh, high marks from uh, lots of folks. And there's also, it's a very positive uh, review here for the game, uh, dealing with the uh, challenges and travails of the folks uh, trying to uh, leave the South and uh, you know, end up in basically in Chicago and Illinois uh, uh, to survive. It's a, a, a tough topic to cover. Right, Eddie Carlson uh, goes over the, the volume three, what's different, what's new in the system. I'm not going to belabor the point there. If you're not into OST, you won't really care about this particular article, but it's a very well-written article, two, three pages long here. Now, this is the game that I thought was interesting. Uh, Long Cruel Woman, let's see, who was it by again? Yeah, it's High Flying Dice. Uh, so, <clears throat> now, I, I'm not sure if this is one of those High Flying Dice games that uses the, let's see, uses the deck of cards mechanic to make everything happen. And if it is, there's a tendency for these games to be very similar to each other. If it's not, then I would highly encourage you to check it out because I think uh, I think Paul does some pretty good work uh, when it's not the the, the sameness of that uh, deck of 52 cards uh, that's used to sort of uh, create this, these random actions and things, things of that nature and the activities in the game per se. Once again, nice pictures and all that sort of good stuff. U-Boot, I've seen this play, uh, you know, it's, it's a light resource management Euro game with a war theme next. Uh, beautiful pictures here. If you want to learn about the game, this might be a great place to learn about it. Uh, there's lots of information on it. There's lots of fans of it. There's lots of detractors of it. Uh, I think it's cute. Uh, I've, like I said, I've watched it played by half a dozen guys drinking way too much beer. They had a great time with it, laughed their asses off, and uh, wouldn't uh, say much more positive about it than that. Interceptor Ace. Now, you know, uh, Greg Smith, Gregory Smith just does some amazing games, and I'm no doubt this is another one of those. It's a solitaire system. I don't know whether there's a lot of decision making that's uh, made in this for you, or whether you make, you're playing for the AI, or whether you have a rich set of choices that need to be made. And they're the things that matter to me for a for a review. This is a pretty short one. It's only uh, probably just uh, two pages. Uh, long or one and a half pages long uh, and, and this does say in the article though that there are lots of decisions to be made so maybe uh, maybe this will be fine for you if you're into solitaire games pretty cool radiation dust so uh, Rob Smith that does this review got me very very curious about this I believe you're going to need uh, yeah this is the white uh, War Drum Games. This is a Chinese production, and I believe that you're going to have to order it from China. That's my understanding. It looks fascinating, though, and very evocative with the, the cover art and the art on the maps that I'm seeing here. Looks pretty nifty. Uh, so scenario, so like I said, there's a, an additional scenario here for uh, the devils to pay. And I can tell you, uh, in this scenario, Lee is still cautious due to Stuart's absence, but he realizes that more troops are needed to bolster any attempt to move those people and take Cemetery Hill. Uh, he orders Johnson's division to advance earlier in the day and bolster Ewell's uh, troops and attack. So there you go. Uh, that's, the, that's the premise behind the, the doohickey. Um, the uh, now that's interesting. Uh, the premise behind the scenario. The index said, "Oh, I did say Armageddon War." Okay, <clears throat> so Armageddon War scenario, uh, a violent peacekeeping scenario. I don't know much about that one. Uh, I haven't played very much uh, of Armageddon War at all. I'm very curious about it, but uh, it just has not clicked with me yet. I need to. I need to invest some more time in it. I've heard, I've heard lots of great things about Armageddon War. Uh, platoon scale in the post-apocalyptic world, basically post-World War III. Hell on Wheels, historical scenario. Uh, so that's set uh, 1944 in France. 
Uh, it looks like a uh, basically infantry force and uh, scout car force versus uh, uh, American tanks with some reinforcements and bits and pieces. So it looks interesting. Uh, Firebase Mary Ann uh, for for uh, uh, sixty five the squad the squad battles, and then this is a, a story uh, that Mark wrote. We won't go into all the details on that. It's quite long. There's six seven. Oh, where we go. Nine, ten pages here. Eleven, twelve pages there. So it's quite, quite substantial. And the game Rattenkrieg, uh, we'll, we'll do a separate overview of this. There's these maps that need to be uh, put together. So you, you've got to cut down, cut down these lines here, and make, and make these maps so they're, they're geomorphic, I guess. Uh, so we can put them together in different means. And there's a solo AI for it. And then the counters are a nice thickness. So one of my complaints in the past has been for any Yar magazine game has been the quality of the counters. They're, they've always been a little flaky would be a nice way to put it. And you can see the artwork there. I'll try and zoom in a little bit for you. Let me see if I can. Hello. Can we get that action? There you go. So you can see those counters, they look really nice. And these are nice and thick too. And I guess these counters are all for the other uh, scenarios. And this is for the gameplay, but this is for the for, John, for Johnson's forces that enter the map. So I'm very interested to get this on the table. It is one, two, let's see. Eight pages of rules, uh, events table, <coughs> uh, one, two, three, four, five scenarios, six scenarios. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, uh, and some tables on the back of the magazine, which you, you, know, you can photocopy or whatever the case may be. So this is Ya Magazine. And as always, I don't know, I shouldn't say as always, because I have not uh, uh, purchased, I didn't purchase this, by the way, this was sent to me compliment, complimentary. Uh, I have not purchased all of the editions that have come out, uh, but all the ones that I have, I have enjoyed immensely, it, just for the reading sake. I think it's pretty well priced all in all, and uh, this looks like a much, uh, a much higher quality uh, of counters and uh, map artwork and all the rest of it. It really gives you that uh, thematic feel for Stalingrad with the snow and the terrain and all that sort of good stuff. It looks pretty cool, huh? Uh, so really good stuff here, Mark. So thank you for sending that to me. I appreciate it very, very much. And we'll look forward to getting that onto the table. Uh, won't take up a lot of space by the looks of it. So we'll uh, we'll work on getting at the table just as soon as we can. All the best, everybody. Put you might like that. Ciao.